Hi, I'm David Dodge. Welcome to Green Energy Futures. You flip on the light, where does that electricity come from? In Alberta, it wasn't long ago when the answer was coal-fired electricity. Alberta's grid is rapidly transforming. But can we take one of the dirtiest grids all the way to net zero emissions? We wanted to find out. So hi there, David. I'm uh, Blake Schaefer. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Economics in the School of Public Policy at the University of Calgary. I research electricity markets, electricity systems, climate policy, all things related to the energy transition. 20 years ago, coal was about 80% of the electric energy in the province. Five years ago, it was still half of the energy. So this is generation shares, actual output produced. In 2021, it's going to be around 20%. And by 2023, by the end of 23, it's going to be zero. That's right. Coal will be zero by the end of 2023. So where does Alberta's electricity come from today? For last year, natural gas generated 62% of the energy. And this is entire energy in the province, not just in the market, but even things that are behind the fence like oil sands. Coal was about 21%. Wind was about 7%, leaving whatever that residual is, about 10% left to the Others, which is maybe hydro and biomass, really. Solar would have been a very small amount last year. This means renewable energy has reached about 17% of our electricity supply. Natural gas still provides about half as much emissions as coal. So how do we get to net zero? Getting off the coal, even though we talked about it as being very hard given its previous dominance, It actually wasn't that hard, given the ability to convert so much of it over to natural gas, which is an improvement. But the next step, getting to zero, is the hard part. Wind and solar will be big in Alberta, namely because they've gotten so cheap, like really cheap. And this is why there's a solar and wind power boom in Alberta right now. But these renewable energies, by their nature, produce electricity intermittently. We need a system that has a portfolio of resources such that we can take advantage of that, but also get the on-demand power we want. Schaefer says it's not going to be easy, but there are four big buckets of strategies that can be used. So if I was to put four buckets, one is supply-side solutions. So that's clean, firm solutions, peakers, hydrogen peakers, geothermal, nuclear, hydro. This could also be natural gas plants with carbon capture and storage. Number two is demand-side solutions, getting more flexibility out of demand. EVs have the potential to be the largest battery fleet out there. Forget building grid-scale batteries. You're going to have distributed batteries all over the place, which can manage distribution-level challenges. Number three is storage solutions. So this is the elegant, direct way to resolve the challenge of how do you integrate cheap renewables into a grid that wants power when it wants it. And then the fourth is moving stuff around, transmission. British Columbia has large hydro resources, which could be used to help Alberta use vast amounts of renewable energy. But transmission would have to be upgraded. And Schaefer says one word makes this hard, politics. Smart technologies, electric vehicles, and other innovations also have great potential to play a role and change the relationship between customers and the utility. Alberta producers are already investing billions in renewable energy, but the pathway to net zero is still a long and winding road. Learn more at greenenergyfutures.ca. For Green Energy Futures, I'm David Dodge.